Are you holding a regular family council meeting? Here's why you must do that. Hey Live On Purpose family, glad you're here for this video because if you're not holding your family council meetings, you really need to. We're gonna give you the five reasons why this is a must. Vicki, do you remember not too long ago we watched this thing on Netflix called The Social Dilemma? Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. It's a little scary, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Quite. They were interviewing CEOs and past presidents of big social media companies, Mm -hmm. like, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, all these social media sites. And the point that they made was that the algorithms that drive those platforms are designed to keep capture and keep mm-hmm. your attention now we, and target yes you, right and they're doing it to your kids <laughs> and they admit it <laughs> yes they're very open about that the longer they can keep your kids eyeballs on that video game or on that social media platform the more money they make in their advertising revenue we do it here on youtube too youtube doesn't charge you for your subscription because they're charging advertisers to show you those little videos that pop up just before you see us. That's why they want to keep your eyes here on the platform as long as they can. It's working on your kids too. And that's one of the reasons we feel like family counsel is so important is it kind of counter, it can be a counterweight for that. You're doing some very intentional grabbing of your child's attention, the same as social media and online. I would hope that we as parents would spend at least as much effort and energy Mm -hmm. as companies that don't care about our kids are spending to capture and keep their attention. That's what we're going to try to do with the Family Council. Vicki, we've been involved also in a nonprofit organization Mm -hmm. known as Nova Principles. You can go look that up, novaprinciples.com. This organization is teaching children principles in the classroom that allow them to avoid risky behaviors. Right. And in the process of all of that, we've done some research around what puts kids at a higher risk for risky behaviors. And one of the things that we found is that regular meaningful contact and communication and conversations within the family are preventative of Mm -hmm. most of the risky behaviors that we're concerned about. Many of you know I'm a speech language pathologist and I heard a study done once where the parents, they had three different groups that were bringing their children into therapy. And one, they were just kind of, they were supposed to turn off the radio and just travel with their child and talk to their child while they go. And another one, they could have the radio going and everything, and it was really interesting, the relationship bond and the ability for the children to open up and talk to their parents, and even their progress within their therapy increased when they had more time to communicate with their parent in a more intentional way. I remember one version of this study where one of the groups didn't even attend the therapy. They just traveled too and then they had some kind of a, oh, I'm sorry, we have to reschedule Mm -hmm. kind of a message and they were just trying to control for that. And they found that this time together communicating with the parent Mm -hmm. was more helpful and more curative for some of the mental health issues they were looking at than the therapy was. Yeah, so you really really can reduce some of that likelihood of risky behavior if you communicate openly and frequently. And what do we mean by risky behavior? We're talking alcohol and other drugs. We're talking violent behavior, bullying, almost anything that you could categorize as a risky behavior that gets kids into trouble This is one of the preventative factors. Okay, we got a couple of other reasons why this is so important, but if you're feeling the need to get started, and I hope you are, do you have an agenda for your family council? We've put one together for you. DrPaulJenkins.com, just go to the URL that's right there on the screen. DrPaulJenkins.com forward slash family council. We'll put it right in your inbox. We've already done the work for you. We've talked about this before. To really have authority as a parent, there are two things that you need, and that is you need to be seen as someone who can provide and keep the limits for a child, as well as be a provider of fun and fun times, good things. 
Family Council actually gives you an opportunity to do both of those. Right. It actually establishes you as an authority in the home because you're creating some structure with your agenda and the regularity of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when you get your Family Council agenda that we promised to send you, that fun is an essential element of it as well. Right. So we're building it in and it's intentional. That's not accidental. The way we've structured this for you actually addresses both of those elements, limits and fun. And that helps to establish you as an authority. And that leads perfectly into the fourth reason to have a family council is in setting up those limits and that fun, you are also going to have to talk about some pretty difficult things. And this gives you a venue yeah. to really talk about maybe some touchy areas. Maybe you, maybe there is a limit that your child is constantly coming up and, and banging against. Maybe it's curfew or cleaning their room or mm. turning in their homework or whatever. It gives you an opportunity to talk about that outside of the heat of the moment. Because I don't know how, many, yeah. how often you've seen that when you approach your child while they're in the tantrum, there's no communicating really happening with them. Not very effective communicating, right? And so it gives you a chance to talk about some of those limits in a outside of the heat of the moment. And it also gives you a chance to invite them in to be part of setting that limit. When people feel that they were heard and that their suggestions were also part of the decision process, you get much better buy-in to those limits. This is really a way for you to create the venue where some of the awkward conversations can be less awkward. It's not like you're saying, okay, everybody, come in, we need to talk. And the kids are like, oh, what is it? It's simply, okay, time for our family council. And you can even give it a fun name. We call ours Jenkins Junction. And you can pick one that fits your family. But when it's a regular thing that's happening, then the awkward topic is simply the topic of the day. We can talk about sex. We can talk about bullying. We can talk about being responsible or doing our chores or whatever it is. And nobody's being singled out on this. It's simply the topic of the day. It's a great venue to do that. That flows right into the last point we're going to give you about family councils is that we can't possibly plan for or anticipate everything that can come up. But having mm -hmm. a regular family council situation set up in your life gives you the venue to talk about it when it does come up. That's also part of the family culture mm -hmm. now too because we can talk about anything, mm -hmm. anything at all. That's the culture we're trying to create with this. And having the venue is half the battle. When you set up your regular family council meeting, you have already won because now we can talk about anything and the kids will learn that, that this is a place, it's a safe place where we can right. have conversations, we can feel supported, we're having fun together as a family. You'll notice one of the other essential elements is having a treat. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It's not just for dads. Uh, the kids enjoy it too. <laughs> Remember, go and grab that agenda. Sometimes you think it's a great idea, but you don't know where to start. Grab the agenda. Just go to the URL, drpauljenkins.com forward slash family council.